name is Mr. Gerald Richard Simcoco, tutor for physics for, for foundation students. Code name OFP 010. The topic we are going to discuss is uh, projectile motion. I've divided it into two parts, part one and part two. Part one, we'll discuss about horizontal motion and part two about uh, vertical motion because uh, projectile motion has got two kinds of motion, horizontal and vertical motion. Introduction projectile motion motion through the air without a, a propulsion. Examples of projectile motion ball, throwing a ball into air, throwing storms, measles, kicking golf ball, Part one, motion of object of objects is projected horizontally, as I said. You can see a ball projected horizontally from my cliff, for example, from my cliff, and. Uh, Yellowish, direct, the yellowish arrow shows the horizontal direction of the ball along x-axis. Axis, x-axis is horizontal and the vertical axis is y. So horizontal axis is x. This is the trajectory of the ball thrown from the cliff. A ball, excuse me, a projectile motion from the graph there shows a projection, two projections. Horizontal projection is up and the vertical projection vertical projection y axis. The reddish is the real ball but uh, bluish is uh, projection horizontal axis and uh, Vertical axis. Motion is accelerated. Acceleration is constant and downward. Constant never changes. Its only acceleration is g, the gravity, which is minus 9.81 meter per second squared. The horizontal x component of velocity is constant. Always constant, uniform. Means never changing. The horizontal and the vertical motion are independent of each other, but they have a common time. Uh, Time horizontal to complete the motion is equal to the same time it will use to hit the ground vertical. The yellow shadow shows the acceleration due to gravity is down always. Analysis of motion. Mm -hmm. 
in the analysis of motion, we make assumptions x direction horizontal. It means it has got only uniform motion. Y direction vertical, accelerated motion. In Y direction, we'll have accelerated motion because of gravity. No air resistance, another assumption, no air resistance actually. If there will be resistance, air resistance, there will be other considerations, frictions and the rest. Questions. What is the trajectory? What is the trajectory? Second, what is the total time of the motion? Sometimes they call time of flight. You may find time of flight the same same thing, total time of the motion. Third, what is the horizontal range? Horizontal range is a horizontal distance along x-axis. What is the final velocity? Those are among questions of this trajectory this uh, projector. You have to understand and to know all these clues to understand this topic. If you master these, you won't have any difficulty. Frame of reference. Frame of reference uh, it means you yourself you make coordinate system where you start whether you choose upwards is uh, upwards is uh, positive and downward is negative or oh, downward is positive and downward is uh, Negative and upward is positive. It's like that. That means the frame of reference you choose and the direction of arrows of those uh, axes, those directions they show positive up and uh, rightwards positive in the next direction. We have a ball in the height H. That ball dropped vertically down. It will accelerate with G, acceleration due to gravity. That ball, if we see projected, it means we we'll have horizontal component also, x direction. The questions of motion in projectile motion. Now, we have in x direction, as we said before, we will consider, we have to consider components in x direction and y direction. In x direction always uniform motion. In y in y direction accelerated motion. First acceleration in x direction zero because we have uniform motion. In uniform motion always Acceleration is equal to zero. In y direction, acceleration in y is equal to g, acceleration due to, to gravity. And in velocity, second velocity, we have said uniform motion, always uniform. It means if you have initial velocity, 
it will be the same throughout the motion. That's why Vx equal to V0, V, Vo. Vo is initial velocity and uh, vertical motion you designate Vy equal to Gt according to the first uh, equation of motion which will be V is equal to U U there plus AT U is equal to zero and then GT for GT displacement displacement uh, <coughs> here in projected motion we call range the name we always call range x is for displacement is equal to distance times time or velocity times time is displacement and uh, in the x direction, we have said uniform motion. So we use uniform uh, velocity is uniform throughout. And uh, in vertical direction, direction, y is equal to h plus a half g t square. H is your reference eight. Is there we saw in our diagram left H is uh, that initial eight plus a half GT square trajectory. Trajectory is a path. Path. So horizontal, we have x is equal to v0 times t. y in vertical, y is equal to h plus a half gt squared. Eliminate time, use the first equation, and then substitute in the second equation. Because why we do this in projected motion is uh, it's a topic is questions you always manipulate three equations. These three equations you manipulate them you use in anyhow in solving matters in projected motion. So when you substitute t is equal to x0 uh, v0, you substitute in the second equation, you get there h is y is equal to h plus a half g v0 uh, divided by v0 square x square. So you can see their trajectory is uh, y is equal to h is uh, constant term and x square there, this is a parabola, quadratic equation, y and x. There, in circle to the reddish one, it shows that equation of parabola is a trajectory. The nature of that motion is the parabola open downward. That means consideration there for x down, facing and facing down there y is uh, positive. Facing this we studied there before in form 2.
so we understand. But here you can see, don't afraid of that. Remember, form two mathematics, only you can understand this simple topic. Yeah, as they are shown. Uh, this, these two graphs, it means two different, if you change different velocities, you can increase the positions. You can also find total time for travel. We, we saw there total time horizontal equal total time vertical motion. Here we say delta t is equal to time final minus time initial. Time initial zero, time final delta t. From our graph, reference uh, in this graph, point o o is zero. So there we say y that uh, trajectory motion that uh, with the reference y with the reference to time. Before we saw y with with respect to to time this time. Before we saw y with the respect to x, that is trajectory. Here, with the respect to time, y equal to zero, point, point o, o. When you substitute zero to the equation there, you can solve for total time. You have to remember this, but when you are going to calculate time, when you are going to calculate time, condition here we are given to consider when traveling that stone or that ball from edge point to down, that position is y equal to zero. So zero, you substitute into equation, then you can find, you know H, because given there, H, you have G, and you don't know time. So delta T, or total time, is that much. Total time of motion depends only on the initial heat, as we can see there. Time when the height on G is constant to be known. Horizontal range is total time. Another component or another item is horizontal range delta x. Delta x is along x. As you can see there in the yellowish uh, drawing there. And we remember x is equal to velocity times time. Final y is equal to zero. Time is the total time delta t. Delta x in time we go to there before. We have that. We formed before. Delta x, you substitute there. That time times uh, V0, horizontal range, depends only, depends on the initial height, H, and the initial velocity, V0. Velocity. Velocity at any point in a trajectory. We have Two components, x direction and y direction. Y down, vy, gt, and uh, vx 
is constant in that initial velocity there in the horizontal direction and angle is there of projection measured from upwards. As you know, using Pythagoras V, you can get from square root of 2.6x direction, y direction, as you know. You substitute because you go to there, you form the Vx, you want, and because it's a constant, you uniform. And uh, Vy is there, you know, you square. And, uh, you can find using the Pythagoras uh, and, uh, and trigonometry, you can find the x you have in the y. You find the angle is tan theta. You, know, you have the y, the x. You divide it get there. Find velocity. You substitute. And get v. v is equal to as in sec of the range in red there square root of v is 0 squared plus uh, 2h we got the uh, horizontal flow summary uh, we discussed but one horizontal flow uh, this is summary that uh, H initial height, V0 initial horizontal velocity, G is equal to minus 9.81. Trajectory, half parabola, open down. Total time, we got. These are points to note. Uh, when you are going to solve any projectile question, you have to consider those trajectory, total time, horizontal range, final velocity, you will be asked to calculate those, or maybe you won't be asked, but you can use any of these to manipulate, to find another thing else. We saw there, final velocity, it depends to all those above. You have to, to know how to derive all of these. But two motion of project of objects projected at an angle like this one in a picture like a missile missile like these ones there we can see at any point you can calculate. Uh, you can calculate the velocity of that point. How you have to use, as we said before, you have to use coordinate systems. Uh, X direction and Y direction you resolve it. But you can see in a picture at the maximum height turning point there. There is no other axis, only one axis, x axis there, horizontal. It means in a maximum height there up, you will consider in calculations, you only consider one horizontal motion. No vertical motion. Vertical motion there you say zero. It means there that velocity vertical zero to there. So life will be easy for you. The ball projected like there with V initial angle of projection, theta, when you resolve that in the initial, initial, 
you want to know why we we resolve initially here in this case. We resolve initially here because uh, we will be asked to find range. That's why we have to resolve. Range, we say that uh, V initial in a horizontal direction times time. And this horizontal velocity is always uniform or constant. We never change it. So we have to know it very initially. That's why we resolve this initial velocity into components. Initial position x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero. Initial velocity. Initial velocity is V initial into theta. It means you resolve according to that uh, angle. Will be in x direction will be V initial cos theta. In y direction V initial sin theta. Y direction motion is uh, motion is accelerated in this trajectory. We see motion is accelerated. We know it to be projectile already. Acceleration is constant and uh, downward acceleration is equal to g. We consider it minus nine as r shows there minus 9.81 meter per second square. The horizontal, horizontal x component of velocity is constant. Those conditions we know. The horizontal and vertical motions are independent of each other, but they have a common type. Analysis of motion in this part two. Part one, we remember it. But in part two, analysis of motion assumptions is as we did before, so x direction, horizontal motion, it means uniform motion, y direction, vertical, acceleration, accelerated motion, no air resistance as before. Questions. You find the questions, what is the trajectory as before, what is the total time of the motion or time of flight, what is the horizontal range, what is the maximum height, what is the final velocity. The questions of motion in this part also. Question of motion acceleration uh, in the x direction, y direction, uniform motion, accelerated motion, y direction, accelerated motion, acceleration, ax, a along x is zero, no acceleration. Along y, acceleration equal to g, which is minus 9.81. It means we consider down, but the ball is going up. Velocity here, Vx is equal to Vix is equal to V initial, initial, this one initial. Vi cos theta, Vi cos theta. Uh, in, in y direction, there we have v initial. We remember formula our uh, first, first equation of motion v is equal to u plus at 
So you will substitute Vy, initial U, it will be Vi sin theta plus Gt. Displacement x is equal to, as usual, Vi t cos theta. Or you can say Vi cos theta is velocity times time. And the uh, y direction, y is equal to h plus this height, it means height. y is equal to h if you have initial height, or if you don't have, you put zero, h you put zero, and then you have your remain with the usual equation that plus phi i y t plus a half g t squared. Uh, v i y, you know it, is v i sin theta times time there. Uh, acceleration those we will repeat trajectory you can see the trajectory as before we eliminate t time t you eliminate from those formulas you you substitute in formulas formula for y when you substitute there, you will get that equation y is equal to x tan theta plus g over 2 vi square cos squared theta x squared. This is a, a equation of trajectory. y with respect to x, you may be given sometimes uh, given and displacement you will be given and uh, uh, this uh, height you will be given maybe then it will be simple for you to, to find angle theta I think you will see this form 2 formula or uh, the para parabolic formula quadratic equation See like that one above. Parabola open downward. Total time now. Final height. Final height is the same before. Y is equal to zero. After time interval delta t. y is equal to zero, it means this point, initial point O, and the final point there x, they are the same. It means point O here is zero. When you throw a ball or a stone, it will come again to the same level. It means final height y is equal to zero, final in this trajectory we have in front of us. Solving for time. Delta. Horizontal range delta x is along x delta x. Final y is zero, time is the total time delta t. As we know, it's uh, v initial cos theta times delta t. This you have to remember 
formal equations of trigonometric identities. Trigonometric, uh, is, so you have to remember like this one sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. We use them in projectile motion. Total time delta t. Total time from our formula y is equal to v i initial. We have this formula t sine theta plus a half g t squared. Final eighty y is equal to zero after time interval delta t. That point there is zero. This point y is equal to zero and this point y is equal to zero. So final final time final Finite means this point here, y is equal to zero. There you substitute y is equal to zero, zero there, equal to vi delta t sine theta plus a half g delta t squared. Solve for So for delta t, from here you will get delta t equal to 2 vi sine theta over minus g Horizontal range Horizontal range X is equal to VI We know this also VIT times Cos theta final, you know, final y equal to zero. Time is total. Total time delta t. Delta x is equal to vi delta t cos theta. Delta x and delta t. Delta t is equal to 2 vi sine theta over minus. G. You substitute because this one we got we got it before in the previous. So you substitute there, then you will have delta x equal to two vi square 
sin theta cos theta over minus g. As we said there from trigonometry, sin to theta equal to two sin theta cos theta. Then you substitute there delta x equal to i square sine is this one sine to theta minus divide by this is one of questions in exam then velocity as we can see vertical vertical component and horizontal components everywhere but only at this point no y component is zero only x component and at this point is a point of maximum height is this one when y equal to zero final speed is equal to initial speed if final speed equal to initial speed it means conservation of energy and if impact angle equal to minus launch angle launch angle is this one here and the impact angle is this one it's inverted okay maximum height maximum height for trajectory Well predicted upward with an angle vy vertical direction of velocity is equal to v vy is equal to v one sine theta plus gt y displacement vertical is equal to vi t sine theta plus half gt square at maximum height at maximum height this v this v is for at any point but <coughs> We are going to consider at maximum height Vy is equal to zero, as we said before in our graph. Then you so you substitute zero into our equation there, then you will get time up going up. You might have V angle you have and the initial velocity given so you can calculate time up always a lot of problems here you will find like this so it will be easy for you to get marks you have to do this you consider at maximum height v, vy is equal to zero and then you will find time up or time to maximum to reach maximum height. Time which is time up. Or you can call it total time. Time up is equal to total time divided by two. Maximum height h maximum is equal to we know the formula uh, v i time time up sine theta it means vi sine theta times time up plus a half gt up square you substitute your time up there into equation you get 
h maximum is equal to v square sine square theta over minus 2 gt. Projectile motion, final equations. All these we have, we derive the whole of these. Initial position is 0, 0, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, vi is equal to, in horizontal direction, vi cos theta, in y direction, vi sine theta, initial velocity. g is equal to minus 9.81. Trajectory, parabola, open down. Total time, we calculated, is equal to 2 vi sin theta over minus g. That is total time. Horizontal range, we calculated vi square sin 2 theta over minus g. So all this you know yourself, you have completed there. Even if you encounter any question, it will be easy for you. Remember how to derive, and then you will know how to solve any question. Projectile motion summary. Projectile motion is motion with constant horizontal velocity combined with a constant vertical acceleration. The projectile moves along a parabola, like uh, that man throwing an arrow. It executes a projected motion. Or satellites. Satellites, you see three stones, first one, second one, third one. The third one, last one, that one shows a satellite, but the first and second is not resembles the satellite. It's like this one, they are launching in America, launching a satellite there. And then this globe is a Earth. is a satellite so revolving around examples examples question one for example a bullet has a speed a bullet has a speed of 330 meter per second as it leaves a rifle, rifle. If it is fired horizontal from a cliff, 6.4 meter above a lake, how far does the bullet travel before striking the water? I will give hints only, not solving. I will give hints to solve these questions. Okay. A bullet has speed, a speed of 350 meter per second. That means given we are going to write given. That are given here, we have Vi initial equal to 350 meters per second as it leaves 
rainfall. If it is five horizontal from a cliff, let me draw free body, our free body diagram. Our free body diagram F B D. Be like this. And this is a ring. This is a cliff. As we said, we are going to to highlights. We are going to give a highlights solving few examples. First question, a bullet has a speed of 350 meter per second as it leaves the rifle. If it is fired horizontally from a cliff, we are told horizontal. It means this velocity is uh, horizontal velocity and is constant. This velocity is Vx also or V initial in horizontal direction, horizontal from a cliff. Cliff is uh, something high, close to ocean, 6.4 meters above the lake. How far does the bullet travel before striking the water? And this means range. How far is the range? We are asking about the range. In the free body diagram, FBP, FBD will be like this. And this is water. We are asking to find this one, X. Given H and the Vx or Vix of that. This is given. Given A, H, K, Vi, K. X or delta X. We don't know delta X. G, we know it. It's okay. So from there, this is considering a vertical. Vertical, we, we don't know vertical. So, if we want to know this one, what we are asking, the range is equal to Vi, we have here without, without cosine, because we are told in horizontal. So already it's, it's time is time. So the task here is to find time. You know you have H. And this ball will move. So we move down like right that. So deal with horizontal component. Initial in your formula, in your formula. It's very easy. In your formula. Initially, we don't have initial vertical velocity because vertical velocity is horizontal is horizontal vertical so the initial vertical velocity is zero so from there you only you you can use formulas uh, which has good time for example Py initial equal to uh, Py final or uh, 
by final. You don't need this one because it has got no eight. You can use second and third. You can use second, second equation of motion or third equation of motion, which have got eight. Another one which has got to time. This one. Use this one. Y is equal to VI Y initial times time plus a half G G squared. In my case, I consider acceleration due to gravity down positive. It will depend to yourself to yourself. Uh, reference you can take maybe downward negative. I'll consider downward positive. So this one component is zero because here we don't have we don't have horizontal. No, we don't have vertical. We have only horizontal. This is zero. This is given and this is given, which is h. This is equal to h. So you will know time. This time you substitute there, here, then you will get this one is given, this is there. That's all. Second question, a ball rolls off a level table with a speed of 2.2 meter per second. The table is the table is 1.2 meters high. How far away from the table or base of the table does the ball land? This question same as the previous question, very same actually. The ball rolls off a table with a speed of 2.2 meter per second. The table is 1.2. So this one, yourself students, we are going to solve it. This one has got a solution. You can follow it. A soccer ball is kicked from the ground with an initial speed of 12 meters per second at angle of 32 degrees above the horizontal. What are the X and Y components of the ball at 0 0.5 seconds? Time after it is kicked. What are the x and y components of the ball's velocity? So this one has got a, a solution. So this one you can solve. You can follow yourself also. It's quite straightforward. The last one. The last one is this one. It has got uh, some trick. Uh, a ball is kicked towards a goalkeeper with an initial speed of 20 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal. At the moment the ball is kicked, the goalkeeper is 50 meters from the player. At what speed and in what direction must the goalkeeper run in order to cut the ball at the same height at which it was kicked? It's a very tricky question. Uh, first, we are going to draw 
a free body diagram of this in physics, mechanics, always free body diagram is very important. It's part of our solution. This is a player for a ball is here and the goalkeeper is there. Goalkeeper is there. The ball is kicked. We don't know. Maybe it will go there or maybe it will go there over the goalkeeper. Here for so we were asked the meaning of the meaning of uh, and in what direction must the goalkeeper run? It means running there or running here. That is the meaning. So not confuse which direction it means there or so, and this is a free body diagram. If it is like that, it means yourself, you have considered maybe before or after a goalkeeper. So what you are, you are going to do, you are going to think, ah, okay, it means I have to Calculate first from the given, I have to calculate range of the ball. The range will determine or will tell you the ball will go before goalkeeper or after goalkeeper. That is the first point, and uh, you will get a lot of points or marks. It means you have to. First, to calculate range delta x. And when you say it, you know, I'm going to only give hints. So you are going to calculate range. Calculate range. Range. You have angle and the initial speed. It means uh, vi x is equal to is equal to twenty times cosine forty five. You will get some value there. This value from calculations is less than 50. The distance here to there, this distance s is equal to 50. This distance here is less, is less than 50. It's almost 40, I think 40. So range, our range, oh, sorry, this is uh, velocity. And, uh, range is equal to 20 times cos 45 times time. How we are going to get time? Time use vertical vertical motion. Consider V. 
y final equal to zero. Vy final equal to zero. Acceleration you have, and the initial you have. So I use first equation of motion. V y equal to V i y plus minus because against the gravity minus G T V i y here is zero because final zero so you put zero equal to V i y here is cos, here is sine 20 sine theta minus 9.81 times t. Rearrange, you get time. When you get time, you substitute there, you get range. Range is uh, almost 40. 40 meters. It means it's less than 50 the distance uh, goalkeeper position. It means goalkeeper, you ask a question, second equation, goalkeeper will move towards the goal. Goalkeeper will move towards the, the forward to catch the ball. What about the speed? The speed, the speed of this goalkeeper is the speed of goalkeeper. We consider Goalkeeper consideration, assumptions of consideration, goalkeeper goalkeeper at rest initial at rest and uh, S distance travel. It means take that 50 minus the range, you will get distance. And the time, time, consider time, assume, assume time is uh, a time when the ball was kicked. In. So that time, take there, distance you have, initial velocity you have, initial velocity is zero. No, 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 no initial velocity. You have distance, you have distance, you have time. Of distance you have time, you can use this formula. Second equation of motion U T plus wait, wait a little. You have to use second face, uh, first and Third equation. First and third equation. We have time, and we have a, we have time. We have distance. 
no acceleration. Uh, we have in the second and third equation, you have distance. You can use both, and uh, you can use the second equation, or oh, both, second and third, and then uh, simultaneous equation, you can solve, you can get uh, the velocity. That's all. Thank you very much. Today's lecture, Newton's third law. Introduction. Forces come in pairs. If you lean against a wall, a brick wall, the wall pushes back on you. Statement, to every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction force. If a body exerts a force F, for example, that force we call FBA on body B, it experiences a force F. A, B, exerted by body B on A. This means forces, forces can come in pairs if you lean against a wall. If a wall tries to push you, you, you lean against a wall, a wall also, you, you it means you, you push the wall and the wall reacts to you. That's the meaning. That's why uh, a force FBA is equal to minus FAB. FBA, wall, you, it is yours, your force, and the F, A, B is yours. So, you equalize. Note that the two forces do not cancel because one acts on A and the other on B. The forces F, B, A and F, A, B are also called an action-reaction pair. Action, the first one, the second one, reaction. Applying Newton's laws. In application, in uh, applying Newton's laws to solve problems, one should be able to translate a sketch of situation into a free body diagram with appropriate axes. Axis A, axis uh, Y, and axis X. Friction. There are two types of friction forces static friction force FS and kinetic friction force FK. FS operates against the applied force up to break away point beyond which motion starts and FK takes over. When a car or a body is stationary or at rest, let's say at rest, there will be a static because the condition there or status of the body there is uh, static, it's not moving. It means there, which makes that body to be stationary there, 
is a static friction. When it moves, it means kinetic. It's a kinetic friction. Definition, the friction law states, states that the sliding, sliding friction force is proportional to the perpendicular reaction of bearing surface and opposite to the and opposite to the body body's movement direction. If the body is in a direction of positive x, so the friction force is against in a negative x direction. The coefficient of friction mu Greek letter mu depends solely upon the properties of the materials rubbing. Materials rubbing. Uh, every material has got its own coefficient of friction. Wood, uh, rocks, metals, different metals have got a different surfaces. This value is given in, in the calculation. The rest friction force appears whenever there is a force acting upon the resting body and it is of equal magnitude and opposite direction. When the maximum rest friction force is exerted, sliding friction. Sliding begins. Explanation. This means that whenever you apply a small force to a body resting on a rough surface, the rest friction force will be annihilated the former according to the third Newton's law. For example, if you are trying to push forward box, a box that is too heavy. The rest friction will be holding it at the initial position motionless. But as long as you increase your force so that it will exert it, so that it will exceed the maximum rest friction, the box will start moving away from the spot. The maximum rest friction force is usually a bit bigger in magnitude than the sliding friction force. This, this is why it is always a little harder to make a resting box move than to keep it moving. Applications before before application. We want to add little more materials on friction. A car, a car's engine makes its vehicle move, and each part of the wheel and that touches the ground moves in the opposite direction. This causes the friction force from from the road surface to appear and act to the direction of the car's movement. This, it, it appears that the, the acting force in the car movement is the friction between the wheels and the ground. Question. The sliding coefficient of friction between the car wheels and the road is mu equal to 0 0.5. What is the largest acceleration that the car may achieve moving straight on a horizontal road? Presume that the engine power and mass are equally distributed to all four tires. This like this, let me draw a 
5 di Giacomo. This is a cup. Moving this direction. And the friction is friction force. The friction with this one also. The surface of the Road and the tires for subduction. Direction we can call it FA, F, or sometimes A. FA, it, it means MA. Okay. Let me continue. Solution for this question is it has already been explained the acting force F that moves the car is the friction between the wheels and the road. Let, uh, let it be the acceleration. So according to the seconds, Newton's second law, F is equal to MA, where M is the mass of the car, it can be seen that the acceleration will reach its maximum when the force F will do the same and it will happen when the wheels will start sliding. In this case, the friction force will be F is equal to mu times N, where N is the perpendicular reaction force of the road. As the car does not move vertically, it, it equals the car's weight, mg. G is the free Four. Gravity. So reaction force N equal to mg, equal to weight of the car. Acceleration G is the free fall acceleration. It is almost 10 meter per second square. So we we get F is equal to mu mg, that is a friction force, and uh, f is equal to ma, that means mu mg is equal to ma, and a is equal to, you cancel out m, and you get a acceleration is equal to mu times g. In our case, the maximum acceleration possible will be that much. If power is the delivered to one tire, one tire bearing one quarter the weight of the car, because we know car has got four tires. So you take the weight divided by four. That's why one quarter, it comes there one quarter. Then maximum acceleration will be F is equal to mu times one quarter is uh, 0 0.25 and times M times G. And uh, F is equal to MA. So the maximum acceleration would be that much. Uh, for this question, is, uh, is okay. The properties of friction, when this is very important, you have to be very careful with this one. Properties of friction, very, very important. When a body is pressed against a surface, it means dry and unlubricated surface. 
and the force and, and the force F attempts to move it along the surface, it results into a friction. The resulting friction force has three properties. If the body does not move, then the static friction force F and component of F that is parallel to the surface are equal in magnitude and, and Fs. If the body does first property, if the body does not move, then the static friction force Fs and the component of F that is parallel to surface are equal in magnitude and that's Fs. is directly opposite to that component of F. We talked before this, the direction of movement is opposite to friction force. Second, the magnitude, the magnitude of this is a maximum value if it's maximum equal to mu times n, where mu is the coefficient of static friction in the n, the magnitude of the normal force, when the component of F that is parallel to the surface exceeds Fs maximum, the body begins to slide. This before, we talked about that also. Third property, when the body begins to slide, the magnitude of the friction force rapidly decreases to a value Fk, given by Fk is equal to mu k times n, where mu k is coefficient of kinetic friction. Note that equations 1, 20 and 1 to 1 are scalar. Fs and Fk are parallel to the surface, whereas n is perpendicular to the surface. The coefficients mu and mu s and mu k are dimensionless, constant friction force. The friction force results from the interactions of surfaces, surface of car tires and the surface of the road. Uh, that's one of the example. Irregularities in the structure of the matters causes friction force. These irregularities can be directed in micro dimensions. You, you may not see any irregularity on the surface of the material. However, it does exist. Friction force is always opposite to the direction of motion and it tends to decrease net force. All materials have their own friction constant. In other ways, friction force depends on the type of materials. Another factor affecting friction force is the normal force. When you apply force to an object, then friction force becomes active and it resists with the force of heavy opposite direction to your net force. For example, you can see the direction of friction in our figure here, direction of friction force, this one, and direction of motion of this box, that direction and uh, friction force less or equal to mu times force normal force of this is a, uh, this is normal normal force n this f norm equal to 
Then, we can calculate the friction force by this formula. By that formula, we can calculate the friction force. Where mu is the coefficient of friction and it depends on the type of material that we know. F normal is the reaction of the surface of the object because it's because of its weight. A friction less or equal to mu mg. We assume that weight is mg, however, if the body is on an inclined plane, then we take the vertical component of the mass while calculating weight. Friction can be studied under two topics, static friction and the kinetic and the sliding friction. Surfaces apply different friction constant when, when the object is at rest and the sliding interesting. The friction constant of the objects at rest is higher than the friction constant of the sliding objects. The sliding friction, the sliding friction, that's like a kinetic friction because it's in motion. The sliding friction force is calculated by using the mu and the mu and the F node. Normal force that surf surface applied to the object a friction equal to mu sliding times mg sliding. Mu sliding is coefficient of friction in sliding, condition or sliding motion. Friction force also exists when there is no motion. We said you, you can use this formula to calculate friction force. For the case of friction, uh, sliding friction, Friction force is equal to mu sliding coefficient of friction in sliding state times mu mg sliding. Friction forces also exist when there is no motion. If two objects are in contact, when we then we can talk about friction force, there is no need for motion. In static friction force, two objects are in contact, however there is no motion. In other words, object does not slide on the surface. You all experience the static friction in daily life. All of us, when we see it, when we see it, whatever. For example, suppose that you push a huge box which is on the carpet. However, the box does not move. Static friction becomes a, exists when you apply a force to the object. The amount of the static friction is equal to the amount that you apply and the direction is opposite to the direction of the motion. If you increase the applied force until one point static friction also increases. We will calculate this limit point by the formula given below. Uh, so you, if you want to calculate the limit, you use these symbols greater or equal. So for this case, we want to know the limit of friction force. It means the coefficient. So you write friction force should be less or equal to mu static times mg static. We use 
less or eco symbol instead of eco because static friction changes with respect to the applied force. That you have to understand that because static friction changes with respect to the applied force. When applied force greater than friction force, it starts to move and there won't be again a static friction will be kinetic friction. It has the value of 1 to the to the limit value. We calculate the limit value by the formula given above. This formula. Most of the time magnitude of Static friction is greater than magnitude of static friction for same surfaces. We also we solve some problems related to friction and Newton's laws of motion. Example. Fifty Newton of force is applied to the six kilogram box. If the coefficient of friction is 0 0.3, find the acceleration of the box. As we remember, this is the diagram. This diagram is equivalent to free body diagram. We don't need to draw a free body diagram. This diagram itself it's like a free body diagram. You have one angle there, 53. This angle is inclined. So you have to resolve this angle into components. Horizontal component, component x, x axis and y axis. As before in introduction there, we talked about axis you choose axis. So we choose axis for angle, for force, like this one. Or if a body is in an inclined plane, like that. So a body here, not in an inclined plane, in a level surface, but force is in an inclined place. So in an inclined plane, so you have to resolve one horizontal, will be like the box, and the, the other one will be we all studied Pythagoras formulas, so we can resolve this one. Components of force Fx, F cos 53, this one, and F sine 53, you get the free body diagram of the system is given above from this diagram we will find the, the normal force of the surface and friction force. This is weight and this is normal, normal reaction force. This is in three body diagram, this is our component of force in y direction. Same, in direct, same direction with normal force, and uh, this is in x direction, friction force opposite to the direction of motion. So you make summation of all forces in x direction and in y direction first. In x direction, in y direction, we have three forces, one, two, three. If normal, if normal plus, if normal plus Fy equal to mg. When you rearrange, if normal will be equal to mg minus Fy. Then you get there. Then you come to x direction. X direction, two forces, one in, 
in this side, another one is in that side, which means the friction force equal to Fx in the x direction. The net force in negative y to negative y to y is zero. In other words, oxy is in equilibrium in this direction. However, in minus x in the x direction, net force is not zero. So there is a motion and acceleration in this direction. If there is a motion in that direction, you have to think also of acceleration MA. It means summation of all forces there, summation of all forces in X direction, you equate equal to MA, as you can see there. Fx minus Fy equal to Ma. Direction of acceleration should be in a direction of your force. Friction will be against the direction of motion. Second example. Position time graph of the box is given below. Find the friction constant between box and surface. G is equal to 10 meters per second square. This is position, position time graph. Position against time of this box, F is equal to 12, direction of motion. So you can get a, a mu there, Slope of the graph gives, you, gives us velocity of the box because we are told about uh, position. Position divided by time is the velocity. Slope of the graph gives us velocity of the box. Since the slope of the position time graph is constant, velocity of the box is also constant. As a result, acceleration of the box becomes zero. No acceleration there. So the trick there, you see velocity, this graph is linear. So everywhere is constant. So velocity, this slope is constant everywhere. So velocity is constant. If it is a constant uniform, it means no acceleration no acceleration. So this force is uh, uh, in this direction. Uh, this force in X, if you sum uh, forces here, you can see you can see MA because you remember force net F net means net forces in this direction. Net forces equal to this force plus negative friction force. Here will be static, no, no movement, acceleration zero. You have acceleration is equal to zero. When you rearrange, you can get this A coefficient of friction K. Instead of mu, is k. This is a friction force. Uh, another example, if the acceleration of the system given below is 2 meter per second square, find the friction constant between the box and surface. Box and surface. We have this force inclined 45 angle. This force 40 square root times the square root of 2, and another force 100 
Newton inclining 35 degrees. This is weight of the box and acceleration of this box moving in this acceleration to meter per second. Free body diagrams of the system are given below. This force, the first force inclining 45 degrees is pushing the box down, pushing the box down. This force, 100 Newton, is pulling the box inclined at 35, 37 degrees. So this in this direction, this one is down direction. In a free body diagram, we can see this force F1 with an angle F2, this one. These two forces, because I inclined, as we said before, you have to resolve into its components, X components and Y components. This one in this component, cosine this one, this, this direction will be F1, this F, F, F1x will be uh, 100 cosine 35, and in y direction, 100 sine, sine that much. And this one, this one also, you have to resolve into x direction and this in y direction. This one, both will be negative. Will be in this direction, this will be in this, this direction. And then this one, direction, that one, that the direction, that one. And also, there is a friction force here also, you have to take into consideration. So when you resolve these forces, you will find this one, this is weight of the body, and this one, 40N, is uh, 40N is Y component of this force, this one. And uh, this one, in this direction, you have X component of this force, and uh, normal force is 100, 100. This weight of the box is 100, and uh, normal force will be Normal force, okay, here we can't see it, but you, you have to consider it over there. Uh, you have uh, this component of this force is foot, and there will be also normal force. Or, no, 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 you, you don't have to, to include here in a free body diagram, you will include it there in a calculation mu mg. Mg is normal force. So acceleration of the of the hundred box is two meter per second. Acceleration of the box per second square. Does net force acting on this body box is F net? It means along the horizontal direction. In this case, horizontal direction or in the x direction. In, let's say axis x direction f net is equal to ma or net force so net force is equal to m times a we have normal force of the box is n is equal to 100 plus 40 because force down here we have two forces, 40 in the 100. So normal force in our case, normal, normal force in our case will be these two forces, 40 in the 100 minus 60. 
this world. So normal force will have here uh, 60, uh, 80, 80, this 80. So net force is equal to 80 minus 40 minus friction force. These two forces, this one is 80 minus 40 minus friction force also down there. When you rearrange it, you can get the coefficient. Another example, an object is pulled by constant force F from point A to point C. From point A, point A to this should be point C. We have a pulley system here. Draw the acceleration against time graph of this motion. F less than mg sin theta and surface is frictionless. No friction. The figure is that one, so you have to draw acceleration against time graph, which means there will be calculations. The motion of the box between points A and point A to B. Point A, you resolve, you draw like this. This is a free body diagram, and then it's theta. And another one, this angle, this angle here is small compared to this angle. Angle theta is less than angle alpha, this one. These are drawings from there. F cos theta is equal to MA1. When the object gets closer to point B, when the object gets closer to point B, theta becomes larger and the value of cos theta decreases. Thus, A1 decreases between the points A to B. Motion between, uh, that is, from point, this is pulling, there is F there force F. Pulley is a system with the ropes or chain moving to this this device there. So it's moving. So this force, when you pull, this one will start moving. When you release, it will come back and the angle will decrease. But when you pull there, this will move to this side and angle theta, this one, angle theta will increase when it moves up to there. When you release, it will go back there. So angle theta will decrease. When the object gets closer to point B, theta becomes larger, as I say. And the value of theta decreases. And here we have, here, we are, we are told that a surface is frictionless. Frictionless, surface frictionless, no friction force, and here F less than mg sine theta. This force F cos theta, F cos theta, this one down, F cos theta, equal to MA1. When this one increases, cos theta decreases, uh, cos theta decreases, it means acceleration also will decrease. Thus, 
A1, it decreases between the points A to B. Motion between points B to C now. B to C, this one. Angle, alpha is this one. Mg sine theta equal to MA2. Net force between points B and C is constant. Thus, A2 is also constant. Acceleration against time graph of the box is given below. Point A, acceleration, this is time graph. This is for graph for A1 up to T1 and A2 from G2 to T1 to G2. This it decreases as we as we say there. It means here we are dealing, we are playing with angles. When it moves, these angles increases or decreases. That's the game. We say that this acceleration will decrease, but this one is constant is constant as we said before we say here net force between points b and c is constant is constant thus a2 is also constant another question system in the given picture below this system here a box in an inclined plane. This is a plane surface plane, uh, inclined with an angle 37. This is a diagram, free body diagram of this box. System in the picture below, box moves under the effect of applied force and gravity with one meter per second square acceleration. Find the friction constant between the box and surface. So, as usual, box is lying in an angle and this force pulling toward the surface, the box. So you have to restore angles in the axis. First of all, you choose axis. Our axis always try to choose axis, one axis perpendicular to surface. The other is horizontal or parallel to the surface. The first one you pull y is parallel or x axis then after that you can resolve there will be force of the weight force this is this is direction it's straight down it's not inclined straight down like this mg and another force you have this force so your axis point, you, you can make it a uh, sentence here. So you take this force to, to the center. Then you can resolve this force. You, you put to the center and you find angle of this one. Angle of this force, angle of this force is like this. Surface. So if it's parallel, it 
It means this angle theta equal to that angle and also is the same angle. So when you, you resolve that force, when you resolve this force, this you have y and this you have uh, x direction, this is x direction. So you see this is this force when you resolve it. Extend if you, if you want. And then if you want, you can extend this one from that direction, that one to there, and this one. This one will be your X. Uh, this one will be your Y. For easy, this angle, the same this one, theta. So this one is x, f x, and this one, f y. This one, and you transfer this to that side. For easy calculations or Resolve. Uh, this is this is f y. Sorry, this is f y and this one is f x. F y, f x, f y. This one it goes along y direction, along x direction. F y. This one. F x. This one. So resolving that force, you will get uh, this one. This one you will find there is uh, this is cos fx will be f cos. This for y will be will be there or oh, this one f sine. This one will be f sine. Another one, F cos. And this one is Mg. And uh, this Mg, because our axis, we say our axis inclined. Our axis is this one parallel to surface and this one. So this one also, this weight Mg, it means is uh, inclined with the reference to our axis. So you have to resolve into y direction and into x direction also. Uh, if this mg is this one, and we say we start considering, we have to consider directions according to our axis. So this one you have to, to resolve it. If down here is 35, it means this one is 90, 90 minus 30, 37. The remaining will be 3 and uh, Eight, five, fifty. This one fifty, three, fifty-three degrees. So you have to resolve into this direction and into this direction. This one. So this direction, this one in x direction will be mg cosine. In y direction will be mg sine. 
So this MG result also in y direction in the in y direction in the in x direction forces acting on the box perpendicular is equal to this one box moves box moves down with it this much acceleration is moving down so f net is equal to ma so summation of all forces that's why f net it means summation of all forces along in the direction of motion direction of motion we say is where there is a the acceleration it means uh, this one friction uh, this one uh, due to weight force weight force this one and uh, opposite to this one there will be we will find friction force also and another one the one which is pushing the box uh, this one the component in the x direction this one also which is minus force from there you can get uh, this constant because friction force is equal to mu or k mg you can get next dynamics example and the pro problem solution a box is pulling pull with a 20 newton force. Mass of the box is 20 kilogram, and the surface is frictionless, no friction. Find the acceleration of the box. This one we did it like this before. We did it like this before. You have to resolve this into components. You choose axis. This axis y, this one x, and you resolve this force. Then you know f net, f net here equal to m a. No friction force here. M g you have here also in a free body diagram. In a free body diagram there, as you have seen there. F net, Fx. F net here is equal to my. So F, F net here will be F only Fx. This picture. Picture, below, the picture given below shows the motion of two boxes under the effect of applied force. Friction constant between the surfaces K is equal to 0 0.4. Find the acceleration of the boxes and tension on, on the road. This is very interesting question. One of the interesting question. Given angle theta, there, this one is uh, sine 37 degrees. This zero here is uh, is uh, should be there up degrees, which shows degrees, and uh, this one also this zero shows degrees. Uh, first box M1, M2, M1, M1 is this one, M2 is this one, and pulled by this force inclined at 30 degrees. Free body diagrams of these boxes given below. This is very important. In physics, you have and mechanics, as I say, you have to know and understand all concepts. You put them into free body diagram. You have weight force here down and then normal force up this box. And the friction force for first box, because we remember why F12, F11. Because we were told friction depends on surfaces or materials. Material for this box is not the same as this one. 
you don't know that. So you have to consider like different. Or oh, this one also, you have to consider that. But uh, sometimes you think they are the same, like this surface is the same. But friction force for this different from friction force on this one. That's why F12, F11, friction force here is different from this one. And uh, we have rope. If there is a rope, this box pulling this box and this one pulling that one. It means there will be a tension in it. And uh, here you have weight force, and this force is inclined. This one, component of inclined force. As you said, you see, when you see inclination, you have to resolve force into axes you are going to choose for your solution, for easy way of the solution. No force. So now life is easy. Component of, components of forces, they are all I've said before, and uh, components of forces, Fx, that one, Fy, that one, normal force, Mg1, minus, No force this one. This. What is important? What is important, as I say, is a free body diagram of any system. Like this one, free body diagram is this one. So now you know your forces, so you can solve a problem. Now it's very easy. Life is easy. You have to first think of all phenomena in that uh, system. So now you can draw your free body diagram. Components of forces from this free body diagram, these forces here, Normal forces, normal forces here, normal force here first, you can get from this one and this one, Mg minus Fy. Normal force here is Mg1 here minus M, only Mg1. Mg1 equal to N2. This one, normal force. So here you apply Newton's second law on two boxes for first box and the second box you get you get a, like a equation a equation from there you will use there then you can get tension and you can get acceleration so it's very easy as you can see in the picture below Two boxes are placed on a frictionless surface if the acceleration of the box X is this one. Find the acceleration of the box Y. This, like the previous question, free body diagram. Free body diagram is that one. This one very easy. Even solution you can see very, very straightforward, easy. No inclined force there, so this one is very straightforward, easy. Uh, another question in the system given below: you know the friction it means frictionless and masses of pulleys. If masses of x and y are equal, find the acceleration of the x of this body. You same trick. Free body diagrams of boxes are given below. This one. And tension force, this tension, this weight, and this one is tension, uh, weight, and here is tension. Direction, you find here, it goes down, maybe this one, this one it goes down, or sometimes up. You choose direction of motion, 
it means that the ratio this one possible is going down or up. Since force acting on x1 is double of force acting on y because of these two rows. This doubles this one. A x is equal to a two a y for x for x this body to t minus this one minus ten weight equal to m a. They have considered direction is up for x. Direction is up. That's why this one is positive and this one t is positive and the g is negative which means it's going up for y t t is up and the acceleration is up also when system is in motion find the tension on the rope or another question when system is in motion find the tension on the rope you draw free body diagram as usual for this one this is uh, if I, this is weight this is tension and this is that force there um, body below will have only t because of this one this t and this t are equal as before there this one before t this one and t this one equal when you solve these questions, you have to know that when you cut rope here, T, T up, T down, they are equal, the same T. As here, this T here and T here are equal. You get, in this first block, you get uh, T, when you get T, you substitute there and then you get uh, item you are asked to find here also. Find the acceleration, another example, find the acceleration of the system. I incline this one, we did there, we did only this part, but this one, this part here, added here, this block, which means T. Now you can see the T. T here and T there equal, but acceleration is different. Maybe down, if we put here down, this one will be up. If it is down, there is will be up. Uh, T here, the same. Look at the free body diagram here. You see? T to T. This one will be weight, and then free body diagram will be tension, forces. But this one, no more, no more force there, and the weight of this body, this weight, uh, resolved into components x axis or this x axis, and this is y axis. So, this you resolve here, there is angle that angle you consider there, and then you get this is weight. This is 90 degrees, so this direction and this direction. This is angle is there, so this one, this will be alpha. Alpha, this alpha is uh, 90 degrees minus alpha, minus theta is equal to alpha. So this one, this will be mg cos alpha this one mg sine mg sine alpha you have tension you have friction force it means moving down this moving down it means this one is moving up is being pulled by this tension and uh, this one component of mg this one and the normal force is there you see
here only we have I wanted to only show the question like this one is a free body diagram and then you can solve very very easy to solve from there you consider you consider uh, net forces net forces there net forces equal to a way of first block you say is up so you say MA is equal to T is up minus F1. So you can know this or this one. Tension you know for uh, M1. For M2, this M1, M1, M1. For M2, it means that forces along x axis along x axis it means we say in net forces m m a is equal to a are the same Accel the acceleration the same for both m a is equal to f to x minus t minus f which y here equal to in y direction f normal normal equal to f two y so if you when you you want to know friction force you use normal is this component f two y in uh, this one mu mu f two y. So when you solve, you get you will get a both equations. You will get a and you will get t also. That's all. Uh, thank you very much for listening my presentation. I wish you all the best in physics. Thank you. Goodbye.